it's rivalry week and of course florida state florida is always a big one here in tallahassee Nolan insiders lane hurt and tim lunafelt here with your game preview tim it's the fresh from florida sunshine showdown <laughs> easy for you to say <laughs> i wish it was and of course a lot on the line for the gators they are playing for that new year six berth and for the florida state obviously they're looking for win number seven improve their bowl situation a little bit a lot on the line for this one yeah and it's also an opportunity to to kind of play spoiler a little bit and you know that's that's not your goal from the outset of the season but the fact is yeah florida's you know going for a, a major bowl game florida state has an opportunity to, to likely take that away while also improving their own postseason standing and then also an opportunity to win another game in gainesville florida state's won four straight there hasn't lost in gainesville since 2009 so an opportunity to, to pick up their fifth win in a row uh, in Gainesville, which uh, is a big accomplishment in this series, no matter who you are, no matter which side of the rivalry you are, you're on, uh, winning on the road uh, in this series is a big deal, and Florida State has an opportunity to to do that. So, still kind of a you know a lot to play for, and you know I really feel like this game, if Florida State is able to go down there and, and compete and, and find a way to win, it really sort of changes the complexion, I think, of this season, uh, certainly of this, this group of players uh, and what they were able to do and what they were able to accomplish. And I think it's something that if they are able to get the result, uh, it's something that they'll remember for a really long time. Dan Mullen himself said it on Monday, I think it was, as Florida State looks a little bit different with Odell Higgins as the head coach. How does the dynamic change, not just schematically with him, but attitude-wise, a guy who's late in this rivalry who's been a part of it for so many years yeah i mean look you know every coach who's been at florida florida state that has put their stamp on this rivalry one way or another i don't know that anybody uh, has done it the way that odell hagans has both now as serving in capacity as the interim head coach but as a player as an assistant i mean he's been around for i think it's 26 of these i mean it's it's a it's a huge huge uh, footprint that he's left on it and so uh, you know what it means to him especially being a, a central florida guy from polk county uh, you know, growing up sort of in the shadow of the University of Florida a little bit, coming to Florida State, being a part of this, uh, it means a lot to him. And not just him. I mean, the, you know, it's all over this staff now between, you know, Mario Edwards is now uh, on, the, on the coaching staff. Stanford Samuels is part of the coaching staff. Odell, of course, you know, all those guys, Ron Dugans, they all have played in this rivalry. They've coached in this rivalry. It means something to them. So it, you know, it definitely feels like it has a, a bit maybe more of a, a personal uh, effect with, uh, with Odell leading the charge and some of those other guys on staff. Florida's defense, as good as it gets, as aggressive as it gets, very good on that side of the ball, going to be a challenge for Florida State's offense. Meanwhile, the other side of the ball, Kyle Trask took over for Felipe Franks in that Kentucky game. And, you know, because of injury, but it seems like the offense has really responded under Trask. Yeah. Where do you see the, the where this game could be won or lost for, for, for Florida State? Well, Florida really hasn't run the ball very much, uh, and it's, that's been an issue for them. And Florida State, if there's a strength on their defense, it's been in the running game. So I kind of think it's going to come down to, to Kyle Trask and the, uh, their ability to pass the ball against Florida State secondary if they can hang with those receivers. Uh, particularly, Florida also has a, a big tight end who's caught more than 500 yards and I think five touchdowns this year. So somebody's going to have to cover him, whether you see Hampson Nasraldine try to line up with him or maybe one of those linebackers. But I'm sure that the tight end is going to be a part of Florida's game plan as well, and that's something the Florida State's going to have to account for. If you're able to rush the passer and have some success covering those receivers, you're going to give yourself a fighting chance. And you know something else to keep in mind, Florida ranks 75th nationally in sacks allowed. Uh, so their offensive line isn't quite up to the same level as, as some of the other parts of their offense so maybe there's some opportunities there as well but I mean as always you know this isn't uh, it isn't brain surgery pressure that quarterback hang with those uh, those receivers as long as you can and, and give yourself a chance there you have it Seminole fans it's the Knowles and the Gators prime time on the SEC network 7 30 p.m. down in Gainesville make sure you watch those Knowles on TV if you get there are a few tickets out there make sure you go get them get in the stadium to support your Knowles it's always a fun atmosphere I've been to that game as as a road fan it, it can be a lot of fun in those atmospheres <laughs> it's uh it's fun under certain circumstances <laughs> uh, maybe not as fun uh, under under others but uh, but certainly if you were there you will be seen you will be heard and and uh, from the other uh, the visiting sideline you'll be appreciated so uh, it's it's an experience for sure there you have it, Seminole fans. We'll have much more from Gainesville. have all your highlights and post-game analysis as well. That'll wrap things up for now. For Tim, I'm Lane. Go Knowles.